Okay, I'm gonna try to keep this one as light as possible knowing that we're gonna get into some pretty dark stuff and you're probably hopping onto YouTube to try to escape the misery of the outside world, but there is a dark side to riding a motorcycle. Motorcycles are dangerous. Wow, thanks Yam, that's some super hard hitting stuff right there. Next, I bet you're gonna tell me that the sky is blue. Well, my sarcastic little squid, it's the truth and that danger both intrigues and frightens us and that's what makes motorcycling so interesting to people. Now, everyone knows that the biggest thing to be afraid of, or at least the thing you need to make peace with this if you're gonna ride a motorcycle, is the fear of crashing, getting hurt, or in the worst case, dying. Yep, see, I told you this was gonna get a bit dark, but instead of fearing death, something that philosopher Yam will tell you is unavoidable, you should be fearing the things on which a motorcycle might speed up your journey to the pearly gates, or to put it simply, the fear that things might lead to a crash. One big caveat that I wanna throw out there before we dive into this one is a healthy fear is okay. It's why a normal person might fear taking a bath with a toaster, but letting these fears keep you off the bike is bad. Today, we're trying to raise awareness of the things that might contribute to a fatal situation situation, and we're going to give a way to handle them should they arise or to avoid them altogether. The number one fear that any person should have is looking like an unshaved gorilla. Yep, Manscaped ad coming in hot. Imagine going out for a Valentine's Day date, it's all going well and you're getting frisky and then suddenly you drop your pants and send your date shrieking into the night because you have a package that looks like an aging Sasquatch that had a dinner of moldy epouse cheese and anchovies. Yeah, that's no fun. And the easiest way to remedy that is with the performance package from Manscaped. Manscaped. You got your lawnmower 3.0 to quickly and easily chop off that tangled and gnarled bush, and then you got their full suite of ball toners and deodorants to remove that taint stank. But the performance package isn't just for your manhood, it's also got the weed whacker to trim your nose and ear hairs and the shears 2.0 to trim and degunk your fingernails. If you get the performance package, you'll also get the shed travel bag and the anti-chafing boxers for free. Click that link below and use the code YAMMYNOOB for 20% off your order, and maybe next time you have a date you won't give them nightmares about the state of your junk. You've got like two weeks before Valentine's Day. Get on it, my dude. In all seriousness, the first thing you should be afraid of on a motorcycle, or at least something you should be on the lookout on your first ride, are changes in road conditions. Why? Because you might be riding along one day when mid-corner, bam, giant gravel patch and whoops, down you go, press F to pay respects. You see, road conditions are completely variable, it's not like on a track where there's a finite amount of asphalt that you might need to look after. One stretch of highway might be perfectly manicured, and another one might look like it was bombed by the Luftwaffe. Here in Texas, our DOT loves cheap and dirty fixes meaning potholes filled with fresh asphalt, tar snakes, and in some rarer cases, a repave, meaning uneven road surfaces. The reason you should be afraid of these is not because your bike can't handle them. In fact, unless you're riding around on the street on slicks, your motorcycle is going to stick to the ground just fine. The reason you should be afraid is because of what you're going to do when you encounter them. Let's get back to that gravel patch mid-corner from earlier. You're riding along, see it coming, and then afraid of hitting it, you stand the bike up, jam on the brakes, and suddenly you're in the wrong lane or you've stopped in the middle of the street. That's bad. Instead, what you need to do is train yourself to suppress the fight or flight self-preservation instinct and just go through it. Stay light on the bars, keep the throttle steady, and just glide over it. The same goes for tar snakes and oil slicks. It's jerky inputs on the bike that'll send you down, not just the mere presence of these obstacles. Number two, speed. If the freedom of the open road wasn't the thing that attracted you to motorcycling, then chances are it was going fast. We all look to people like Rossi and Marquez drag an elbow at 100 miles per hour and think, hey, that's pretty cool, I wanna do that. Then you run out and purchase a proper squid missile, hit up your local back road looking to get the bike leaned over as much as you can because tracks are expensive and you know the road really well or whatever other excuses you might have. Speed alone is not to be feared. For example, the 70 mile per hour speed limit shouldn't be keeping you from riding on the highway because you're worried about going that fast. What I'm talking about is riding too fast for the road you're on. I know you're going out for a weekend ride, you don't want to feel like you're driving this daisy and so you twist the throttle and just go a little faster here and there. We've all done it, it's fine. But the faster you're going, the less time you have to react to things in front of you. Without getting too in the weeds, braking distance has to do with your speed squared as it relates to time, which means that your braking distance is 175 feet at 50 miles an hour and 315 feet at 70 miles per hour. Also, if you're past the point of no return and you're going to hit something, it's better to be going slower because you're imparting less force on yourself. In summary, don't be afraid of going fast, but do be afraid of speeding. If you need to scratch the fast boy itch, just go to a track. And remember what they say, speeding never killed anyone, but stopping suddenly sure did. Number three, road rage. This one's super easy to get sucked into. You're poodling around town when all of a sudden someone in a car cuts you off. Instead of letting it go, you get all hot-blooded, speed up to get alongside them just to flip them off, and while you're distracted extracting your revenge on the car to the side of you, you neglect to see the little old lady crossing the street and splat. 
Road rage is a very common occurrence because you can so easily strip the driver of the car of their humanity in your mind and lose your temper. It wasn't some overworked stockbroker who turned without signaling because he was exhausted from a long day. It was some dumb cager who wanted to kill you and you must take up the flag for motorcyclists everywhere. Nah, dude, just let it go. I get it, it's hard to be forgiving when someone's inattention could have easily led to you getting scraped off the pavement, but it's not worth it potentially getting yourself into another accident. Just beep your horn and move on. It's also worth pointing out that if a cop watches the whole thing and you just react like a normal person, they might pull over the other car and ticket them. But if you go all Hulk smash and bust off a driver's mirror in a fit of road rage, then the cop's gonna pull you over even if the car was originally at fault. If it helps, maybe put on some Enya in your helmet to calm you down. Number four, cell phones. Now I know we just got done talking about inattentive drivers cutting you off, but this doesn't have to do with drivers on their phones, but rather your cell phone. I know we talk about having cell phones on your handlebars to look at maps, Ricardos on your helmets to listen to music, but on a motorcycle, your first and foremost focus should be on your machine and the road. If you have to take your phone out to fiddle with it, just pull over. Don't try to play around while you're riding. You might be able to get away with it in a car even though you really shouldn't, but on a bike, there's really no excuse for being distracted by your phone. If you're a beginner, I would recommend recommend not even having your phone on when you're on the bike. You've got enough to worry about between getting used to riding on the streets, familiarizing yourself with the motorcycle, remembering to turn your blinkers off as well. You don't need to be looking at Instagram or answering booty calls at the same time. As you get more mileage under your belt, you can add music or maps to your ride because you've developed the muscle memory to handle your motorcycle under most conditions, but you really shouldn't be texting or watching videos or whatever else you do on your phone that might distract you from riding. Also, riding is a great way to get away from everything, so if you don't need to have it on you, you might as well just chuck your phone under your seat and just enjoy the ride. Number five, poor maintenance. No, this is not gonna be me just telling you to lube and clean your chain more often, Jim. This is gonna be me telling you that everything on your motorcycle needs to be maintained. If your tires are low on air or have seen too many miles, they won't handle as well. If your brake lines haven't been bled in a decade and your brakes won't work right. If your rear sprocket is so old that it has more in common with a brake disc than a Ninja Star, then you're not gonna be able to put down power. Keeping your bike in tip-top shape is one of the best ways to eliminate the possibility that it'll explode underneath you and yeet you into the grave beyond. I know it can be daunting or expensive, but skipping out on maintenance for your motorcycle is like not going to the dentist. Your teeth might work well for a while, but there's no way to know if they're rotting from the inside out. When you're on a motorcycle, you have no backup. If something on your bike fails, then you're either gonna come out to a slow stop and have to wait for a tow truck if you're lucky, or you'll crash because of some easily preventable problem caused a catastrophic failure. If you're getting on your bike that's new to you and you're not sure if it's been taken care of, remember your T-clocks. If it passes mustard, then you can take it out for a spin. If it does doesn't tell the owner to put that junker out of its misery. Number six, cold. Yep, riding in the cold is something that you should be afraid of, but once again, it shouldn't prevent you from riding, but something you need to keep in mind while you're riding. When you're cold, the blood leaves your arms and legs to try to keep your core warm, which leads to frostbite in the long term, but in the short term, it causes you to try to curl up and tense to keep yourself from getting any colder. This leads to you riding with your arms locked, your shoulders tensed up, back curled as you try to make yourself as small as possible to keep your mushy bits warm. That's a hard habit to break as it's a natural reaction, but what you need to do is sit up straight and allow yourself to get colder. Sure, it's not going to make it any more comfortable, but what it will do is allow you to keep you from having heavy, jerky inputs as you try to limit your exposure. The same goes for the rain. Trying to make yourself small to avoid the wet leads to less smooth inputs in situations that require even more smooth and predictable ones. If you're going to be out riding the cold, Spite made an entire list of some of the essential items to have that will keep you comfortable, but getting cold is inevitability. When it happens, remember to stay light on the bars. Number seven, overconfidence. Recently, we talked about confidence being one of the main things that separates beginner and experienced riders, and I alluded to how overconfidence is a bad thing, but today we're going to take a look at it. Take a look at this graph. No, not the Nickelback meme. I'm talking about this graph of your crash risk versus your knowledge or experience, otherwise known as the Dunning-Kruger effect. As you go from knowing nothing to getting a little more experience under your belt on a motorcycle, you will try to push yourself harder and harder. You'll take more risks in your riding because you think you know everything, and then suddenly you'll encounter something that scares the daylights out of you. Maybe it was a near miss or a crash you walked away from. That's called the peak of Mount Stupid. After that, your confidence is completely shattered and you'll fall into the valley of despair. As you get back on the horse, you slowly build your confidence back up and reach the plateau of sustainability where you'll be able to ride confidently, but you know enough to not take stupid risks. 
For most people, you have to have the peak of Mount Stupid moment before you realize you're riding well beyond your skill level, but the key is to keep your inner lizard brain quiet when you're on your motorcycle. Don't try and show off the girl on the sidewalk who probably hasn't even noticed you. Don't try and race that Mustang just to prove the inadequacy of American muscle cars, which we all know is the true and factual statement. Just ride your own ride and get home in one piece. Fact. The oldest customer complaint dates back to ancient Mesopotamia. In the nearly 4,000-year-old cuneiform tablet, a customer claims that he was sold inferior copper ingots. Goodbye. Wow, look how pretty this is. You know what else is pretty? My beautiful face and this next Yammy Noob video. Click it right over here and check it out for yourself. There's fun memes in it, maybe Hayabusa's, maybe some cool stuff. There's only one way to find out. Click that video. Do it now.